Are you ready for some curves? Hello and welcome back to the Maker Jane channel where I share all things English paper piecing from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. In this video, we're continuing on with our Flowers and Butterflies EPP skill building series with pattern number four, curves. We're gonna be tackling curves in this stitch along. And in today's video, we're gonna start with the flower. The flower has both concave and convex curves. And I'm gonna show you from start to finish, step by step, how to handle your basting as well as your stitching when it comes to these curves. If you're new to the series, be sure to check out the links down below in the description where I've got the entire series playlist there for you. You can also check out the blog post where I've got all the information there for you as well. And as usual, if there's any tools that you see me using in my video, I've got links to those down below in the description as well if you're curious about them. I'm excited to get into the flower with you, but before I do, remember you can also join us in the private Facebook group where we love to see you share your flowers and butterflies from this series. And you can ask any questions and also make new friends in the EPP community there. We'd love to have you. So let's head over to the work table and we'll get started on our curved flower stitch along. Okay, let's go over the materials you're gonna need to make the flower from this pattern. First of all, you will need fabrics. And I have been using three fabrics for the pattern, for the flower specifically, but you really could use more than three or you could use just two. It's whatever you uh, wanna play with with fabrics. So in addition to your fabrics, you're gonna need some coordinating thread. I usually pick out two threads. Of course, you're gonna need your needle and I've already got mine threaded with the first fabric that I will be stitching. But before we get to the stitching, we're actually gonna do basting first. So you don't necessarily need to have that threaded yet. I've also got my little thimbles that I like to use. These are just paper sorters. So that's what I use for a thimble. I have two pairs of scissors here. One is my thread snips. These are what I use while I'm stitching. And the second pair is what I use for cutting my fabric. So I'm gonna be using these first. You don't need two pairs of scissors, but I like to have them because once my fabric's cut out, then I tend to move over to a lot more, uh, to a kit that's a lot more travel friendly. And these scissors go in that kit. So in addition to your scissors, you're gonna need your glue basting stick. This is a Soline glue pen. There are other brands out there, but I really pre prefer this brand. So this is what I use. And you may need a refill. Um, this pattern isn't huge, but if you end up making multiple flowers, you're probably gonna need a refill. And this is what the Soline glue pen refills look like. So I've got these off to the side just in case. I know I'm running low on that one, so I probably need to grab one of those of course, you're gonna need your templates. So for the flower template, you should have one octagon shape. You should have eight of the small inner petal shapes. And again, you should have eight of those. And then you should have eight, oh, I just dropped one on the floor, eight of the outer petal shapes. And the templates can be found in your pattern. So if you don't have the pattern yet, you can get the PDF downloadable pattern from my Etsy shop, linked below if you need to get to that. I also have pre-cut templates for you in the shop as well. So if you don't wanna cut your own templates, you can get pre-cut templates from my shop. So that's it, that's all we're gonna need for this flower. So I'm gonna kind of get rearranged a little bit here and I'm gonna start showing you how I go about cutting out my fabric for these curved pieces. So you're gonna wanna have your fabric pressed before you do this step. Um, I don't, but you can kind of get away with not pressing your fabric if you're glue basting. I typically don't press my fabric, which is not a very good habit to get into, but uh, if you wanna press your fabric, go ahead and press it now. So I'm gonna put this 
purplish blue in the center of the flower and the center is the octagon shape. So if you're stitching along with me, go ahead and grab your octagon template and the fabric that you want for the center of your flower. And I was just taking a look at the front of this fabric because it is old fabric. I did uh, receive this as a gift in a whole bunch of fabric that I got from a retired quilter. Um, and I'm just taking a look because I noticed there's some fading on the crease, what used to be the crease of this fabric. So I'm taking note of that as I flip over my fabric. I want to make sure that I can see that on the wrong side so I can avoid it. So I'm just going to place this kind of in this area. But before I do, I'm going to put a dab of glue on the back. And then I'll flip it over. And if you're fussy cutting this piece, then you'll want to use the skill, the fussy cutting skills that you learned in the previous patterns stitch along videos. And I'll link to that up above here. Uh, use your fussy cutting skills to fussy cut your pieces if that's what you want to do. You can also use that DIY fussy cutting template that I showed you how to make to create a template and then you can find your repeats. But for this video, I'm not gonna do any fussy cutting, any real specific fussy cutting. I gotta take that back because there is a little, a little bit of fussy cutting that I will be doing. So now that that's tacked down, what I do is I just go around with my scissors and I stitch, I stitch, no, I don't stitch. I trim away the fabric, making sure that I'm leaving at least a quarter inch seam all the way around. And this is the one shape in the flower that doesn't have any curves. So you don't need to worry about doing anything special for this particular shape. We'll get into that next. Okay, so I've got that cut out. I'm gonna show you how to base this real quick. And to do that, I'm just gonna zoom in. There we go. I may zoom in even more. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to get my glue ready. Yeah, I'm running out here. And just like a basic shape that's got straight sides, you're just going to baste along the edge like we've done from the very beginning with our first flowers and butterflies pattern in the skill building series that talked about hexagons and the basics of EPP. You're going to do the exact same thing with this octagon. It doesn't matter what side you start on. You'll just start on any side. Pick a side, any side, and then you will work your way around the shape. Just like I taught you in our first stitch along pattern from this series. And again, if you're new to the series and you're just joining us, please go back and watch the previous videos because they build on one another and they're really, uh, they were created and designed to really help you go from a beginner EP peer to an experienced EP peer step-by-step, pattern-by-pattern. So be sure to go check out those videos. All of the links to the entire series are down below in the description, so you can find those down there. Okay, so our octagon shape is ready for stitching, but before we can stitch it, we need to finish basting all of our other shapes. And so now we're gonna start getting into our curve. So I'm gonna set this aside, and I'm gonna go to my next fabric. This fabric is, uh, I'm gonna put that fabric right here in this this middle area of the flower. So I need to grab my templates. These are the small petal templates that go on the inside. I'll just set that there. And so you grab all eight of them and get ready for basting these. I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be our first, our first curves that we're gonna baste. I'm gonna show you how to baste these curves. And then once we get these shapes basted, then we'll move on to the outer petal. But the, the key feature with these shapes is it's 
it's they're designed to start you out slowly with curves okay so you'll notice that three of the sides of the shape are straight so it's only half of the petal that's curved it's just this side and this side so i'm going to show you how to base this right now but first i need to pull this fabric out and again as you're if you're fussy cutting you want to think ahead about how you want your fabric to be arranged around your flower. So this is a directional fabric, meaning there are stripes going in this direction. And if I turn it this way, it changes the look of the fabric. Okay. So I want my petals, I want my stripes to be arranged in this direction along my petals. So I'm going to place them on the fabric in that position. If I wanted my lines to go around my flower this way, which could look pretty cool actually, now that I'm thinking of it. So if I wanted my, my um, if I wanted these lines to go this way along the petal, right this way then I would position my template differently but for right now for the purpose of this video I want my stripes to point out from the inside out to the outward edge of the flower so I'm gonna place them just like this on the wrong side of the fabric so I gotta flip it over and I'm gonna move this around so that I've got it here, let me just position it this way. And again, I did not press this, but I think I'll be okay. <laughs> so there is a little bit of a repeat I'm seeing with this fabric. Um, it's a slight repeat. It's not, it's not identical. And I'm going to just point that out to you real quick. What I'm seeing are these two dark pink lines with the green in the middle. And then I've got two more over here. But what I'm noticing is on the left of that, I've got the pink stripes, but on the right of it, it's slightly different. But what I'm thinking I may do is I think I might use these lines as my reference point because this is kind of a fussy cut. It is technically. And I can use those, whichever color stripe I want as my reference point. And what I mean by reference point is I need to know where I'm going to place it within my petal. Now I could just say, you know what, I'm just going to do it totally random and, and move on with it. But, um, but I do want to do a little bit of fussy cutting. So again, if you are new to fussy cutting, be sure you go back and watch all of the fussy cutting videos that are linked down below. I'm going to go ahead and use this little white line in between the green and the pink as my point for my petal. And I'm just gonna try to place this as straight as I possibly can. I don't want it to be, you know, like that or like that. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. And really what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the point here and then I'm looking at the base of the petal and just making sure that it's as perpendicular to these lines as possible. Once I have got that figured out, then I'm just gonna go ahead and put my dab of glue down and place it carefully back where I had it. And basically you just continue in this way, making sure, of course, as usual, that we leave enough space between our templates for our seam allowance. And I think I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Rather than having this same 
pink and green stripe going through all of my petals. Now that I have four of them basted in that area, I'm gonna move this one over and I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna flip this over so that I can kind of get it right in here. And I'm gonna use this little stripe, this little white line as my reference point for these templates. That way it's going to mix up the striping a little bit so that not all of the petals look exactly the same. And again, I'm just eyeballing, making sure I've got enough seam allowance here and enough seam allowance here while also looking at my point and my petal base to make sure, and I'm looking at the seam allowance here too, uh, to make sure that everything is how it needs to be. Okay, and I've run out of room on this row, so I'm just gonna, let's see, maybe I can, no. Uh, let's see, where is my repeat of that? Way over here, it looks like. Yeah, way over there. So I'm gonna come down here. I do want these to be the same. I'm gonna come down here, close to the edge of the fabric, so I'm not cutting into the middle of my fabric. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm using that little white line between those pink lines as my reference and sticking that down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. So let me show you how I do that. Basically, it's the same thing we did before. However, we have a curve to deal with here. So keeping a similar seam allowance as usual, about a quarter an inch, you're gonna wanna cut out your fabric. And what I do when I get to where the curve starts is I start, right, kind of mirroring that with the fabric and I just follow, I kinda eyeball that curve with my scissors. And I'm not measuring this with a ruler, I'm just eyeballing it. And then you'll notice that there is a point, it's a very slight point on this curve, but there is a point. So I try to simulate that with the fabric. And again, I just try to follow that edge while maintaining my seam allowance. Okay, and this piece is ready for basting. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of these petals, and then I'll show you how we're gonna baste them. For this particular shape, there is a specific order in which you're gonna to wanna to baste. So let me show you that now. What I like to do is I like to first baste the bottom edge. Next, I go to the opposite side of the template, and I'm gonna baste these curves next. Now keep in mind, this is not usually what I recommend when we are basting pieces like this or like hexagons. If you're basting a piece that is symmetrical, both vertically and horizontally, you can just baste in the round like we did for this piece. But when you're working with shapes that are only symmetrical in one direction, and when you're working with shapes that have curves, sometimes it can be easier to baste opposites. So keep in mind that any rule that I give you as I'm teaching you, they may not be a hard and fast rule, okay? Uh, it may just be more of a suggestion. <laughs> so for these shapes, I'm gonna go ahead and start in the lower end, and my glue stick is starting to dry out just a little bit. That's all right. So I start on the lower petal. It really doesn't matter where you start, but just because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna be coming in from this direction. And I press on the corner or the edge where the curve meets the straight side of the petal. And I push that in first. And I let that basically adhere itself to the paper. 
Then as I go around, I'm gonna be taking my finger and kind of pulling or pressing that paper into the template and over the template. And the key with this curve is you want to try to avoid having any creases come right up to the edge. So you'll notice I have a little crease here, but it doesn't come all the way to the edge, so it's fine. And you're, you will have some gathering. You will have some fabric uh, creasing over on itself, and that's, that's totally normal. But you just don't want that crease to come all the way to the edge of where the paper is. The reason for that is you don't want the creases to show on the front side. You want a nice smooth curve. So we've got one curve basted. Let me show you how to baste the other side, the other curve. And our point is right about here. So I'm making sure that I am continuing that seam allowance off of that point so that I can see where that point is. What I want to do now is I want to add glue. So I'm going to add glue over that fabric because my seam allowance, my next seam allowance is going to fold over that. And I'm basically going to do the reverse of what I just did. So we're doing the other side and I start again where that curve meets the side of the petal. Folding that over and then I slowly work my way around the curve and if you need to and if you have fingernails they can be very helpful for this process and you just press it into the glue like normal so I do have a little bit of a crease here but if I flip it over I'm not seeing it on the edge so I'm not going to bother fixing it if you needed to fix your crease so if you do end up finding that you have a crease on the edge of your curve, you can go back and readjust your seam allowance by pulling it up and then just working it in with your finger until you've got your creases where you want them. And then finally for the shape, now the only thing left we have are the two sides. So you can just base those just like normal. And depending on the size of your shape, you may want to use the tabletop technique that I showed you in a previous video of the series. And that's going to make a nice little point right there where the side meets the curve. And you want to see that because that's going to help you know where to start and stop your stitches, which is very important. One thing I want to note as well, before I, uh, before I base this other side, I have this here, so I'm going to mention it. You may have noticed that my tip up here isn't really a sharp point anymore, but that's okay. We're going we're gonna to work with that as we start assembling our pieces. Just so long as you know where the point is, you have a kind of a rough estimate of where that point is, you're going to be able to work with it. The reason why this is rounded out a little bit is because we have a we have one seam allowance folding underneath another seam allowance right here and the actual point at where it folds may not be in exactly the right place. But like I said, it's okay. We're going to work with it and it's it is forgiving. So, I'll show you how to work with that as we move in further into this flower. But first, I need to finish basting this side. So let me do that. And I'm doing too much talking <laughs> because my glue stick is drying out and it's getting all goopy. So here is what your small inner petals should look like, something like this, once they're basted. And I'll just show you the back. And to review, what we did is we basted the bottom the base of the petal first then we came up to the curve and we started with the curves because I'm right-handed I started on the right side of the petal if you're left-handed you can go ahead and, and start uh, on the left curve and then work your way around 
but really it's whatever makes you most comfortable. So after we did the base, then we did the curves and then we came back and we did the side sides of the petal. So I've got one done. I'm going to go ahead and finish basting the rest of these petals and then we'll move on to the outer petal shape. Okay, next up is the outer petal shape. So we're going to tackle both convex curves as well as our concave curves on this shape. So let's dive in. First, we want to attach our fabric to the template, just like we have already. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that I've already been doing, tacking down my templates, making sure I leave enough seam allowance all the way around each template. And I'm not fussy cutting, so I'm going to save a little bit of space and try to really get these in here. And you can do that by alternating them uh, up and down. And you just want to make sure that you're going to have enough room to cut right between these two templates. If I were to flip it over and put the curves next to one another, I would need them to be a little bit further apart and the cutting would be a little bit more precarious. So as it is right now, I can just take my scissors and come in right here, straight at this angle and cut right between these two pieces. Same thing here. I can cut right between these two pieces. So arrange them however you are most comfortable on your fabric and cut out your fabric shapes. Just like we did with the previous petal shape, you're going to follow the edge of your paper with your scissors, leaving at least a quarter inch of a seam allowance around your shape. Now, if you're working with the smallest size templates from the pattern, you may want to experiment with working with smaller seam allowances. A quarter inch might be a little bit too big seam allowance for some of those pieces, especially for the butterfly. We're not talking about the butterfly in this video, uh, so I will probably address that again in next week's video. Uh, but even with the flower, and if you're making the smallest size flower, just keep in mind your seam allowances may need to be smaller than a quarter inch. But for the medium size flower, which was what I'm making here, and for the large size, you can definitely get away with a quarter inch or even more. So that's why those shapes are uh, great if you're just starting out with curves because they give you a little bit more fabric to play with and a little bit more uh, wiggle room to play with as you are exploring curves. Now, I don't know if you noticed this on the previous shape that I just cut out, but when we cut around this point here, Notice that I'm not cutting my fabric into a point. I'm actually blunting that point as if it was a straight line because I want to get around that point so that I can then continue the cutting around the, the inner curve, the, con the concave curve. So see how I did that? I just kind of left that blunt rather than making it a point. That's going to make it easier when we get to the basting part. So I did the same thing on this one. I just made that a blunt edge. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the shape, we are cutting our fabric to a point because it's not a very sharp point. Whoop. Right here. So I can just match that same shape like we did on the previous petal shapes. Oh, 
Okay, so you're gonna do the same exact thing for the rest of your outer petals, and then I'll show you how to baste in the next step. Okay, so for the basting of this shape, we're gonna do something very similar to the previous shape that we did. We're gonna start on the bottom, and then we're gonna go across to the upper curves, and then we'll finish with the sides. So, because this shape has curves on the bottom, we're gonna work with those differently. And notice these curves are concave curves, whereas the curves we've done so far are convex curves. So we'll come back to the convex curves in a moment, but I wanna show you how to baste a concave curve. Before we can actually put any glue down or do any basting, we need to first trim our fabric. So you're gonna need your fabric scissors and preferably they're gonna have a sharp point because you need to be very mindful of these cuts that you're gonna start making. Let me just show you as I walk you through this. So what we wanna do is we want to basically help this fabric relax as it's folded over the template. So as it's folded over the template, we need to allow the fabric to stretch out a little bit. And the only way to do that is to cut little slits in our fabric, just like that. Notice when I'm cutting my slit, I'm not cutting right up to the paper. I'm staying away from that paper. And because this is a fairly small curve, we really only need about three little snips. So take your time with this and pay attention and make sure that your scissors are not going all the way to the paper. Once you do one side, then you'll wanna go and do the next curve on the other side of that bottom point. And notice that I'm leaving at least it looks like maybe three or even four threads of fabric between the tip of my scissors and where my template paper is. And that's very important. So now that that's done, that's ready to base now. That is the only special step that we have to take for this type of curve. So let me zoom in and I'm gonna show you exactly how we base this. So we're gonna lay down our glue and it really doesn't matter which curve you start with. You can start with the curve to the right. You can start with the curve to the left. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this first curve uh, to my left, right? And because I'm right-handed, I like to start in that area and I put the glue down on the paper just like normal. And then I bring my finger up underneath my fabric like normal, and I'm gonna press that fabric over the template, making sure that it touches the edge of that paper. You want to make sure that you make, you wanna make sure that you feel the edge of that paper with the tip of your finger. And as you press it over, because we've put those clips in the fabric, the fabric will automatically open up just like that. And it stretches out and it fits that curve very nicely, nice and smoothly, very nicely. And that's what you want. You want your fabric right up against that template. You don't want any loosey goosey basting here. You don't want air or any gaps between your template and your fabric at this point. Um, because then you're not going to get very accurate shape when you stitch. So now that we've got one of the concave shapes or one of the concave sides basted, let's go ahead and do the second one. So just like normal, I'm going to put glue, a little bit of glue on the fabric because we have fabric that's going to fold over onto that fabric. And then I finish the rest of the side with glue. And I like to start in the middle on this second side to make sure that I get that fabric folded over on the first side that I basted. And then again, you just push, I'm just, I'm just pushing straight into the template. I'm not doing any kind of pressing to the side. I'm just going straight into the template, making sure that that fabric hits right up against that template. 
And the fabric will naturally spread apart. You don't have to do anything to spread that fabric apart. You've already done that by cutting it. So if we look at it from the front side, you can see I've got a nice sharp point right here and I've got nice smooth curves on both sides. So that is how easy it is to baste the concave shape of this flower. So let's continue on with the convex shape and this is gonna be done just like we did on the smaller petal shape. Now, because this is a larger curve, it's a longer curve, you've got a little bit more uh, opportunity for your creases and you've got more creases happening. So you just wanna make sure that uh, you are pushing those creases away from the edge of the paper, just like this. See how that crease doesn't start until back here? You don't want it starting right at the edge. And if it does start at the edge, like this one's getting a little bit close, then you can just come in and actually what I do is I take my fingernail and I just kind of press that out. And that usually fixes the problem. So that curve's done, we'll do one more convex curve and we're almost done with the petal. So again, I'm gonna start on the outside of that petal. You could use, let me show you this way. You could use your left hand to baste if you are ambidextrous at basting. That works too. And let's take a look at those creases. So mm, that one's getting a little bit close. Let's take a look at the front. Not bad, not bad. I don't see any points along the edge, so I'm not gonna mess with it. If you did see any uh, folds like this, obviously that's a point, um, but we're not gonna worry about that because we know that there is a point at the top here. It might not be in exactly the right spot, like I mentioned earlier, but that's okay. Um, if we were to see something like this along the edge of the petal, then we would wanna go back and either take the fingernail or reposition our seam allowance so that that little crease goes away from the edge. And finally, we're gonna do our sides of our petal. And because these are, there's not much fabric here to fold over, so I don't even bother using my finger. I just use the table to fold that over. And then that way I'm not getting glue all over my hands. And if, it, if a little bit gets on the table, that's not a big deal for me. So same thing, we just flip that over. Oop. There we go. And we've got one petal done. So go ahead and do the same exact thing with the rest of your outer petal shapes. Okay, with all of our pieces basted, we are now ready to start stitching our flower together. So for the first part of the flower, you're gonna need the center piece and you're gonna need your small petal pieces. And what I always recommend doing before we begin stitching is lay out your pieces on the table in the arrangement that you want them. So because I know that I have two different versions of these petals, I want to lay them out in a specific way. So I'm gonna do that here on the table so that I can get an idea of what it's gonna look like uh, when it's stitched together. So for this, I'm just alternating my petal designs to see what that looks like. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. I think I'm gonna go with this. So now I'm ready to start stitching. So you can really start anywhere on this, um, on these shapes, but I'm just gonna start at the top. And the first thing we wanna do is we want to actually attach our petals to the center of the flower. So just pick a petal and pick your center and go ahead and stitch that on using the same technique that I showed you 
in our very, very first video in Stitch Along and that we've covered repeatedly over and over and over as we've been going through the skill building series. You're just stitching straight sides, so it's pretty basic. So I knotted at the beginning and now I'm going to do my whip stitches all the way down the seam. Making sure I'm picking up fabric from both, both fabrics, picking up threads from both fabrics. And when you place your petals onto the octagon shape, you want to make sure to line up your points as accurately as possible because these petals are going to be right next to each other and uh, they fit pretty snugly around the octagon. So you don't want them to be off-centered because that's going to uh, impede on the space that you have available for the next petal. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. I just knotted at the end of my seam. I am not going to cut my thread because I'm gonna continue stitching from here down the next petal. I'm gonna open this up and you can see here that I have a little bit of extra petal fabric that's gone over my point here. I really, don't want that. And so I've got two options. One is I could tear out my stitching with my seam ripper and redo this, or I'm going to show you what, what I do instead, because I really don't want to redo the seam that I just did. So you really want to try to avoid this as much as possible, but if it does happen, I'm going to show you how to work with it, okay? So as you're adding your petals, just keep in mind you want to really try to get your points lined up. I could have moved this petal further over to the right just a little bit to even out, um, to bring that this edge in just a little bit, but for now it's fine and it's actually perfect because I want to show you how you can make little adjustments as you go. So again, I'm not gonna cut this thread because I wanna continue stitching right where I left off, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the next petal, which is this one to the left, and I'm gonna bring it up to its spot on the octagon, and I'm gonna go ahead and place it where I want it. So I'm gonna come in really close because I wanna look at exactly where I'm placing this. And you can see here that I've got the point of this corner of the octagon right where the point of the petal is. And that's exactly what I want. But because this petal has encroached a little bit beyond where it should, I'm gonna have a little bit of tightness here with the fabric. For right now, I'm not gonna worry about it because all I'm doing is I'm stitching along this seam. And we're gonna continue all the way around the octagon before we come back and stitch along this seam. So I will talk about that, how we're gonna handle this a little bit later on in the video. So go ahead and add your next petal, just like I'm doing here, and continue stitching all of your petals onto your octagon, making sure that you keep your corners as lined up as possible within the side that it belongs on. You don't want it to go beyond those points. Like right here, you don't want your petal to go beyond this point here. Okay, so just like normal, I'm going to secure this seam with a couple of stitches and a knot. So here's my knot. Oop. 
And I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing with my stitches all the way down. And then I'm going to do two stitches and knot at the end here. So go ahead and add all of your petals all the way around, one by one, around your octagon. And again, it doesn't matter which direction you go. Just pick a direction and stitch in that direction. Once you've got all your petals attached to your octagon, then we'll come back and we'll start stitching our petals to one another. Just pick up where your thread is, where you left off, fold your piece in half, your center piece, line up your edges for your petals, and we're just gonna stitch this seam like normal. First, we're gonna go ahead and put our knotting thread or knotting stitches in. So there's my, oops, there's my knot and just stitch a simple whip stitch all the way down to the end of the petal. Now, because we're working with petals that have curves on them, I'm going to show you where you want to stop this seam as I get closer to it here. Okay. So you may already see it, but you'll notice that our curve is starting right in this area and we don't want to end our seam too soon and we don't want to stitch too far. So the way that I determine where to stop this seam is I try to look for the points of where the seam allowance folds over. Let me get a bigger pointer for you here. So this is my seam allowance for the side seam that I'm stitching right now. And the point of that fold is right here. And it happens to match up pretty closely with the point of the fold of this seam allowance. So that's, that's what I look for to know where to stop stitching this seam. Because it's, that's kind of like the little corner and then, then we've got a whole new seam starting as the curve continues around. So I'm going to stop my stitching right at that point. So I'm going to take one more stitch right there. And that'll be my final stitch. And then I'm going to do my knotting stitches. And what that is going to do is it's going to allow the petals to open freely without encroaching on this curve that we want to keep, we want to keep those separate. We don't want to start joining the curves together because that's a totally different seam. So that's how I determine where to stop my stitch. So once you have sewn two petals together, you can go ahead and bury your thread and cut it. And then we'll move on to the next pair of petals. Okay, so my thread is free and I'm ready to move anywhere on my flower. But because I want to show you this next seam, I'm going to go ahead and move to the seam just to the left of the one I just stitched. So again, you can see it's overlapping just slightly. It's not a huge overlap and you don't want a huge overlap. You really wanna to try to avoid overlapping as much as possible. But in this case, I didn't avoid it. So let me show you the solution. We're gonna start the seam exactly the same way that we did the previous one. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to make sure, first of all, that our seam, which is right here, this is the seam we're going to stitch. We want to make sure that our, our petal pieces aren't sticking out beyond this center. Sometimes you'll, your petal pieces will stick out so far past it that your seam will actually be over here and then you end up with this kind of like this hole and it's hard to explain without actually showing you. 
But basically, you want to stitch that space closed because you don't want holes in your work. So if you find that your petals are sticking out further than this, you want to make sure that you close up that gap before you stitch down the steam. So I'm going to show you how you would close up that gap just so you know how to handle it. So it's very similar to starting your seam, but what I like to do is I like to go ahead and take my first couple of stitches just to get that thread secured. And then what I'll do is I will take my needle and I will make a cross with my stitch. So I will actually go in through the petal on the right and I will cross down into the central fabric. And I'll pull that stitch through, if it doesn't knot on me, there we go. And then I will do the opposite. So I'm just making an X. I will pull a few threads from the central fabric, in this case, the purple, purple, purple blue. And I will send my needle across, if I can do this here for you. Come on, okay. I'll send my needle across into the fabric on the left. Because it's not sticking out very much, it's kind of hard to get it captured. There we go, there we go, okay. So see how I'm picking up both fabrics? I'm picking up my center of fabric and then I'm picking up my petal fabric from the left petal. So that's how I close up any gap that might appear from a misalignment of my petals. And you can kind of tug on that. You know, you want to tug gently but firmly. That's going to close up that gap. And then I go ahead and do just a regular straight across stitch between petals. And this final stitch will be where I tie my knot. So I send my needle through the loop and I just tighten that up. So that's how I handle petals that might have gone beyond uh, a little bit farther than they should have and that might be overlapping one another. Now, because we have this folded, right now they're not overlapping. So I'm just treating them like normal and I'm going to stitch this seam just like as if they weren't overlapping because they're flush. The edges are, are in line with each other. And I want to, in a way, it's almost like easing. If you've ever done any garment sewing uh, or you're familiar with that term easing, basically you're easing the seams together, you're easing the fabric together. And once you remove your papers, which is gonna be at the very end of the project, once you have a plan for what you're gonna do with this flower motif, you can remove the papers. And once you do remove those papers, everything's gonna relax. Your fabric is gonna relax and your threads are gonna relax. They're really gonna just kind of settle into where they wanna be. So the overlap is not gonna be a problem at that point. It's really just because we, we've got paper uh, backing our fabric and so everything's just a little stiff. So you can see I've already done my knotting stitches and I did my final knot there just like normal. And I'm going to go ahead and bury my thread and move on to the next set or pair of petals. So hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions about what I just showed you, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them for you there. Okay, so two, two petal sets stitched. I'm going to go ahead and finish all of my petals, stitching them together. Go ahead and stitch together the rest of your petals, and then we will continue on by adding the outer petal shapes. I've got all my petals stitched together, so you should have all of yours stitched together as well, and we're gonna move on to these outer petals. So I've gone ahead and re-threaded my needle with a different thread color because I'm no longer working with this blue purple. I'm now gonna be working with a pink. So I went ahead and picked kind of a medium value. It's like not too light and not too dark because I'm working between a fairly light fabric and a fairly dark fabric. So I want it to blend between the two. I really don't want a dark fabric that's gonna be visible in the lighter fabric. And I also don't want too light of a thread that might be visible in the darker fabric. So 
those are just a couple ideas on how you can um, kind of help your stitches blend in a little bit better is really uh, just thinking about your thread choice. So one thing that I forgot to mention in the materials is a clip of some sort. And I use these wonder clips. You could also possibly use a paper clip. Uh, you could also use washi tape. Now washi tape's gonna work a little bit differently, but I'll show you how I use this clip and then uh, you can experiment with the washi tape as an alternative if you don't happen to have these clips. You don't have to have these clips. There's many different ways that you can stitch curves. Basically, you just need something that's going to hold your piece where you want it while you're stitching. So I'll show you how I use these wonder clips. And the first thing we want to do is we want to grab one of our petals and we want to grab our flower so far. And these outer petals are going to fit right in between two inner petals. And you can see we have this sharp point that comes down in between the two petals. And then we've got our concave curve here and here. That is, those two curves are where you're gonna sew your petal. That's what's gonna attach this outer petal to your inner petals. So we're gonna start with these two seams and then we'll move on to the next steps. But let's just start here. I don't wanna get too ahead of myself. There's, of course, multiple ways that you could approach these petals. But what I have found to be the easiest and the most intuitive and easiest in the fact that it helps keep everything aligned and just easier to work with is to start at the point and work your way out on one curve and then come back to the point and work your way out on the other curve. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So what I do is just like normal, we wanna flip our pieces face to face, right sides together, okay? So I can just do that like this. That was, that's how we would do it if these sides were straight. But you'll notice that when I flip it like that, my seams don't actually line up. The only thing that's actually lined up is my points. So you could start stitching right here, but that doesn't really give you a lot of fabric to grab a hold of. Plus, you're on a seam right here. You don't really have any fabric right in the middle. So any fabric that you would have to grab would either have to be on this side or on this side. So rather than start straight up and down like this, what I have found to be even easier is if we actually take that point and we turn it like so. So the first seam we're gonna work on is the seam on the left or the, the petal, the smaller petal on the left, we're gonna attach to this concave curve here. So when I line it up like this, what that allows me to do is, number one, it allows me to line up my point right where I want it, which is right in between those two petals, right there. And it also gives me more fabric to play with. So I actually have a little bit of a seam right here that I could do maybe three stitches in a row to get this piece attached. That gives me more to work with than if I had started stitching it the first way that I showed you. So this is what I recommend. Just to review real quick, I know it's kind of a lot, but you're gonna take your petal and basically you're gonna fold it over along this first seam. And because we're starting at the point, you wanna start or keep the point area lined up with the inner petal right there, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start our stitch there and we're gonna do this just like normal in terms of how we start. We're gonna bury our thread under the seam allowance and we're going to secure our first stitches right at that point. 
just like as if it was a straight seam, we're just treating it the same way because we do have a little bit of a straight seam right there. So go ahead and start your stitches right there at that point. Take a couple of stitches and then finally your knotting stitch. Once you've got your knotting stitch done, uh, it's, it's secure. It's not going to go anywhere. And then you can make a couple of stitches along that little short seam that we've created. I mentioned before, there's several ways that you can approach these curves, and there's also several different stitching techniques that you can use for curves. So right now, I'm just using a whip stitch because I've got two pieces that are lined up for a short period, uh, a short distance, and I can, I can just use a simple whip stitch because they're right next to each other. So I'm doing that for this part. But now, if you look at this from the back, we no longer have our fabrics lining up, okay? One fabric goes up this way and the other fabric goes out this way. I'm gonna show you the way that I sew this. I go, I go ahead and open the whole thing up and I grab my clip and I clip it right here. What that clip is gonna do now is as I stitch, it's gonna keep it from opening like so. We want to keep those seams or those fabrics right next to each other. And what I'm going to show you now is called the flat back stitch. So I still have my thread right where I left off. All I did was open up my pieces and add my clip. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab just a little bit of fabric from one side, just a few threads, and send my needle over to the other side and grab a few threads from that fabric. And then I'm gonna push my needle all the way through and pull the thread all the way through. And that is the flat back stitch. Let me show you that again. A few threads from the fabric on the right and a few threads from the fabric on the left and pull through. And you'll notice if we flip everything over to the front, we are actually not sending our needle through to the front of our work. We're only picking up thread from the back of our papers. We're not going through the paper. So again, we pick up a few threads here and a few threads from the other side. And you can see a little bit right in the middle it is not going through to the front of the work. It's basically skimming across the back of the papers. And with the needle there, I'm gonna flip it over and show you the front. So you can see you're not, you're not seeing the needle at all. So that's the flat back stitch and that's how we are going to finish this seam. We started it with a whip stitch and we're finishing it with a flat back stitch. And as you get closer to your clip or your uh, tape, if you are taping it, you can remove it if it's in the way. Now, if you are going to use washi tape, let's say you don't have any clips and you don't wanna buy any clips right now, that's totally fine, you don't need them. What you would do instead is you would take your washi tape and you would stick it between your two pieces so that it's basically like a piece of tape like this. And that way it's holding both your large petal and your small petal uh, together. It's not going to be as strong or um, it may not hold it as well as a clip would, but it'll work in a pinch. So experiment and see if you like working with the tape. If you don't like working with the tape and you find that it's too finicky, then you can upgrade or, you know, graduate to clips. But you do not need clips. You could even use scotch tape. If you don't have washi tape, you could even try scotch tape. 
that's a pretty common basic home office type of supply. Uh, and it's not even a home office supply. With all of the holidays that, that just happened and all the gift giving, you may have extra scotch tape laying around. Uh, you could even maybe use um, packaging tape. So any, any tape that's tacky enough to hold your pieces uh, in position. And again, you're just putting it on the face. You don't want your tape to be too tacky to where it's actually gonna pull on your fabric. So I wouldn't use anything stronger than scotch tape or washi tape or packaging tape. And even some packaging tapes are, you know, stronger than others, so just keep that in mind. So what I'm doing here is I am knotting. I'm at the end of my seam, I'm gonna knot, but I'm knotting with a flat back stitch. So I'm just taking the same uh, the same type of stitch with my needle and I'm repeating it in the same place just like I do with the whip stitch. I take a couple of stitches in the same spot and then I will take a third stitch using the flat back technique and before I pull it all the way through I'll send my needle through that loop and that will create my knot. Now what I do is I go ahead and bury my thread and snip my thread because I need to finish the other seam before we move on to another shape. So I want to get this whole petal attached to the flower before I move on to my next petal. So let me show you how to do that. We've already stitched the seam on the left. Now we need to stitch the seam on the right. So just like we did the seam on the left, we need to flip our piece over onto the front and we wanna line up the point, keeping it lined up with that petal that we're gonna stitch. And we can go ahead and you can go ahead and just fold this petal over, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna look at it from this direction because it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I just flipped it over and basically I'm just making sure that my point is still in the location I want it and it should be because everything's knotted. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't move any further. And you just wanna get this lined up. You kinda do a little bit of a twist before you fold your template down. You can adjust so that you've got a little bit of a seam here that you can stitch using a whip stitch. So that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my thread, treat it like a brand new seam by burying my thread in the seam allowance. And now that I know where where everything's uh, where the seams are and everything's good, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of squish squish my templates so that it's just easier to hold. And again, just take a couple of stitches right there at the beginning with a standard whip stitch. Making sure you pick up both fabrics right at that point. Like so. And tie your knot. Then you can continue on down a little ways while we have those seams lined up with a whip stitch and I've already <laughs> I've already reached the point where my curves are starting to uh, go in opposite directions so I'm going to stop here leaving my thread and everything where it's at I'm going to open up my work and now we are going to change over to the flat back stitch and finish this seam so I'm going to grab my clip and here is where I would get my tape if I was using tape and I would make sure that the seams are together, kind of hold them, and then just put a piece of tape right here. And that should hold them enough for you to stitch them. But I'm going to use my clip, because that's what I have here on the table. And oh, I just pulled it apart. There we go. And even the clip can be pulled apart. So just be careful as you're working with your pieces. 
And you may find too, I'm, I'm finding that this is a little bit stiff and it's kind of awkward because I've got these weird folds going on. You may find that you want to remove this center paper and you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to leave mine in because I have a different plan for my flower. But uh, if you don't want your paper there, go ahead and remove it. And then that will remove the stiffness so you can hold things a little bit better. So I'll show you the flat back stitch one more time. Again, we're just picking up a few threads from both fabrics. And we're also going, notice I'm going perpendicular. So my needle is at right angles in relation to the seam line. So my seam is going this way and my needle is going this way. And that's going to ensure that you're taking the smallest, how should I say this? That the smallest uh, stitch is happening. So if I had angled my needle going this way, you've got a little bit more distance between your shapes at that angle and there's potential that your thread will be more visible. So if you take perpendicular or 90 degree stitches, 90 degree angled from your seam, that's another way that you can ensure you know, that your stitches are in, as invisible as possible. Okay, so just like that. Work your way all the way down the seam until you get close to the end. You can remove your clip if you're using it. And finish off your seam with the flat back stitch. And then finally, we add our knot right there at the end. So you'll notice that my outer petal shape doesn't come all the way to where the fold of this inner petal seam allowance is. And that's okay. Uh, kind of like the other petals, these inner petals as we were stitching those together, I will show you how I take care of any gaps that start appearing in this area. But before we do, we need to add the rest of our petals around our flower. So go ahead and pause the video and repeat exactly what I just showed you for each of your remaining outer petals. So you will bury your thread, right? Your, your thread is going to be on the outside of your seam. You want to bury your thread, snip it, because you're going to start the next petal in the middle. So you want to start with fresh, fresh thread there. So... You will attach each of your petals just like we did. You'll start at the point, you'll work your way out on one side, and then you'll come back and work your way out on the other side. If you need to rewind the video and rewatch it, go ahead and do that now until you get all of your remaining outer petals attached to your flower just like this one. And once you're at that step, then you can continue on with the video and I will show you how to stitch this seam and close up any gaps that you might have between your outer petals. Okay, now that all of your petals are stitched to the actual center of the flower, we can go back and stitch in between our petals. And I'm gonna show you how to do that, especially with these petals that have a little bit of gap in between them because maybe the petals didn't quite match up. So I'm going to go ahead and show you on these that have the gap. We'll go ahead and start with this one that has the largest gap. So what you want to do is just like the inner petals, we're going to fold our piece in half along that seam line and get your petals lined up so that you can stitch them. And just like we did with the inner petal shapes, we're going to actually, we want to close up that gap. So I'm just burying my thread here. And I'm going to take one stitch, one whip stitch, just directly across in the outer petal fabrics. Just like so. 
And I'm gonna take one more stitch. That's just gonna secure the thread so that as I pull on it, it won't pull out. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do the same cross technique that I did on those inner petals. So I'm gonna start on the right because I'm right-handed. If you were left-handed, you would be starting on the left. You're starting from the working hand and going away from the working hand. And again, I'm picking up the fabric from the outer petal and then I'm crossing over to the inner petal. And I'm picking up a few threads of that fabric. And I'm gonna pull that tight. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. So I come over to the right side, again, the working side, and I'm going to go across to the left, making sure that I actually pick up the fabric from the outer petal as well. And it looks like I might have only picked up my threads, so I'm gonna reposition a little bit, make sure I actually get the fabric. You wanna also be careful not to, yeah, we should be okay, not to actually go through to the front side of your work. So be careful that you're not sending your needle through to the front and complete that cross stitch like so. And then I'll take one more stitch and tie my knot. And this is just a straight, straight across perpendicular stitch in that outer petal fabric. And then I'll send my needle through there. What that does is that just tightens up this whole area and it's gonna tighten up the gap. And then as you're stitching along this seam with just a simple whip stitch, you wanna pull firmly on your thread and that's also going to help tighten up that gap. And you'll just stitch to the end of the seam line, just like we did with the inner petal. You'll know where that is when you see the corner of your seam allowance fold right there. That's where you'll stop because right after that is where the curve starts. And you want to make sure that you don't start stitching the curve because if you do, you won't be able to open up your flower. So take your securing stitches and your knotting stitch, and then you can bury your thread and move on to the next seam. Making sure I don't actually poke through the front of my work when I bury my thread. There we go. And there you have the seam closed up. Now, it does look like I had a little bit of my threads showing on the front. If you use a coordinating thread, you will avoid that. So again, you know, be careful about the type of thread you pick. I could have chosen a slightly darker thread to work on this, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, one reason for that is because from far away, what that lighter thread is actually going to do is it's actually going to create an illusion and make it look like there's a sharper point here on this inner petal. So it can actually work for you. But of course, up close, you can, you can really notice it. So as you're doing those cross, that cross stitch to close up your gaps, just take extra care not to let your needle go through the front of your work. I could tell that I might have had uh, some issues with that and that's why I was trying to fix it but I guess I might have already stitched through it uh, before I even noticed. So just practice. Do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is hand stitching after all and our hand stitches, even if they're visible, give our artwork character. So what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish closing up these remaining seams and you go and go ahead and do the same. And once you're finished closing up those seams, then your flower will be done. And I'll come back here with you after I've finished stitching mine and we'll just discuss some closing thoughts about 
the flower and some possible finishing options. So go ahead and pause the video, stitch up between your petals, and I'll be right back with you for our closing thoughts. With your curved flower done, you now have several options to choose from in terms of finishing. One option is you could applique your flower onto a piece of background fabric and then use that as a block and stitch your blocks together and create an entire quilt with applique flowers onto the background fabric. And um, you could stitch the blocks to each other. You could also add sashing in between the blocks. There are lots of different possibilities for making a quilt out of these flowers. Another option you could, uh, you could use the flowers for is to make a wall hanging. And you could use the same technique, which would be an applique technique, whether that's by hand or by machine. You would applique your flower onto some background fabric and then mount that background fabric into either a frame or an embroidery hoop. In one of my previous videos, I showed you exactly how to do just that. And I will link to that video up above here so you can check that out. That was our project for the Flowers and Butterflies pattern number three. So even though that particular video shows a completely different flower and a completely different butterfly from the pattern we're working on in this and future videos, you can use these, the applique technique in the same exact way. What you would do if you wanted to applique your flower, whether it's on a wall hanging, a pillow, or even a quilt, is you would want to first give your flower a nice press from both sides with a nice hot iron. That will help set your stitches and it will also help set your, your creases and your seams. And then you would go back and start removing all of your papers. But refer to the video that I mentioned earlier for the steps on how to take your flower from that point and actually add it to the background fabric. I've gone into that in very, uh, very good detail step by step in that video. Another option that you have for using your flower in a project is you could actually use it in a way that I'm going to be showing you in a future video coming up very soon. I'm going to be showing you how to actually make a hanging mobile. And you can use any of the flowers and any of the butterflies from this entire Flowers and Butterfly series uh, for that mobile. So I'll be going into the details of that project in a future video. But if you want to make a hanging mobile, I would suggest not removing any of your papers. You want to leave all of your papers in because you're going to need the stiffness that those papers give for that mobile. So you can go ahead and press your flower now that it's finished and just set it aside until that future video comes out, which will be in a couple of weeks. And then I'll show you how to make that hanging mobile. Reason why you want to still press your shapes is because we've been putting creases in our papers and the, the pressing is just going to help everything flatten out nice and flat so that when we get to that mobile project, your flower block or your flower motif will be ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this curved flower stitch along. Remember, if you have any questions about what I covered in this video, be sure to leave them down below in the comments and I'll answer the questions that you have. Feel free to also join us in the private Facebook group, the English Paper Piecing Party, which I've got linked down below in the description. And there are several EPPers in the group that wouldn't mind helping to answer those questions as well. We also would love for you to join the group and share your flowers and butterflies that you're making from this series. In next week's video, we are gonna continue on with our curves adventure, and we're gonna be stitching up the butterfly from pattern number four of the Flowers and Butterfly series. So if you're not yet subscribed, be sure to do so and click that bell for notifications so you can get notified on when I post that video next. 
And then after that, we've got one video left and I'll show you how to make a hanging mobile project with all of your flowers and butterflies that you have from this entire skill building series. So you can look forward to that as well. Thank you for joining me in this stitch along. and I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, keep on stitching. Thank you.